to the fifth episode of Impact Etching You. In this episode, we continue on the theme that we started in the previous one, where we talked about how to create perfect engravings on the stone. In the previous episode, we talked about configuring your engraving machine correctly using objective tools. And by objective tools, we meant the uh, standardized testing square, which contained all of the colors from perfect zero, which is black, to 255, which is perfect white, and everything in between. In this episode, we talk about how to correctly color balance your image. Again, to reiterate, the ideal engraving, ideal, bright, perfectly color balanced engraving on the stone is a combination of correctly configured engraving machines and the correctly color balanced image that you feed into that engraving machine. That is the sweet spot that you need to hit to create very good looking engraving. So what is color balanced image? Uh, color balanced image is merely the image that contains all of the colors from the range of perfect zero to the, to the perfect white, uh, to the range of perfect zero, which is perfect black, to perfect white, which is 255. Most importantly, your image need to contain those brightest colors from our standardized palette. Uh, otherwise, it will just not be bright enough. Uh, mind you, we are set up our machine correctly by making sure that the top three, four lines on the stone are as bright as it gets. And our criteria with uh, diamond engraving machines, because they are much deeper than laser, is that you, actually, you can actually move your finger over the top of engraved square and you can feel it. You can feel the polish is completely removed. But if your image only contains the colors that are like in this range from say 0 to 200 or even from 0 say to 180 it will just never have a chance to engrave those bright colors and overall your image will be just very dark on the stone and you will be puzzled as to what did I do wrong. Again, just like with setting up your engraving machine to our, where we use objective tools to find out whether your image is correctly color balanced, you need to use objective tools as well. Why? Because our eyes are not a good measuring device of absolute brightness of a given image. Our eyes are, our eyes are more or less okay figuring out relative brightness, but by just looking at the image, there's no way you can tell, I promise, that it is correctly color balanced. And to find out if your image is correctly color balanced, we're going to use two tools. One of them is called eyedropper, which is like spot checking your image. And another one is called brightness histogram. And I'm going to show those tools to you in a few um, seconds. Uh, one thing that is really frustrate, frustrating about color balancing the image, as I told in the previous episode, is that almost nobody, including professionals, are doing it correctly. If you use our tools like Photograve uh, it, with your laser machine, I suspect that maybe it will fix some of that. Uh, and maybe it will forgive some of the mistakes because it, it will likely adjust the image to be somewhat more color balanced but that's still not a reason to not prepare it correctly in the first place and uh, you, you should at least understand how to measure that the image is correctly color balanced so uh, enough of uh, talking I'm going to go to my computer now and show you my screen where we can play with those tools and hopefully it will become much clearer Okay, uh, so now let's see what kind of tools we can use to figure out if our image is correctly color balanced. Mind you, to even get access to those tools, you need to install some kind of advanced raster editor. Your regular Windows Paint will not do that. In my case, I'm using Corel Paint Shop Pro software. And uh, uh, in a separate episode, I'll talk about different types of raster editors that I recommend or that exist out there. The must, the best objective tool to measure the color balance of the image is called histogram. 
in my in this particular software histogram just so that you understand basically what is it what is histogram and uh, what is it that it shows in this particular case on a horizontal scale it shows all of the colors from perfect black on the left to perfect white on the right and the height of the bars on this histogram basically tells you how many color how many pixels of that particular color are, are there in this image for example you see this huge bar in the left that just denotes the fact that there's a lot of black in this image because the background of this image is black the interesting thing about this histogram uh, as you notice is that there's this gap on the right of this x scale which basically corresponds to the brightest colors in the image and uh, to better understand uh, what I mean I would like to probably put it over here and then zoom in and uh, mark it up for you so I meant this place you see how there's no colors in the range of maybe like 200 to 255 that means this image is just not bright enough all of its colors go in range from perfect zero to somewhere around uh, looks 236 and around 20 brightest colors that we have will just not I, I just note in this image and those colors correspond those colors correspond to the very top of our color range that's where the machine should etch uh, the brightest colors what it will result in it will just not be bright enough on the stone even though like visually and again coming back to the fact that our eyes are not a good measure objective measure of color uh, balance visually it kind of looks okay but you look at the histogram and it doesn't our and histogram actually most of the tools in, hist in, in a histogram adjustment most of the uh, raster editors in the histogram adjustments allow you to uh, adjust the brightness by 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 uh, applying the certain transition function. Uh, I wanted you to uh, I wanted to let you know though if you use the the Photoshop, uh, it has a slightly different histogram. I think it's turned 90 degrees. In in um, in Photoshop, I think the colors go on a on a vertical scale and the pixel count goes on a horizontal scale. Either way, you need to understand what you deal with and how to. Uh, and this, how to work with the histogram. But in this particular case, I, for example, would like to um, pull up the colors. Hold on. I would like to pretty much raise the brightness of everything, but at the same time, uh, maybe pull up those colors to over here. So again, just uh, I applied this histogram adjustment. Now it's a perfectly color balanced image. And uh, I would recommend that you compare before and after. So again, I'm going to do before and after. Before and after. I hope you can see the difference. So uh, that was the best and the most objective tool called histogram adjustment. Uh, I'm going to cancel the changes that I did, and I wanted to show you another tool which is good for spot checking, and it's called eyedropper tool. Uh, it looks like an eyedropper, and what it basically does, any pixel that you move this eyedropper over, it shows you the number of that pixel, the color, the color number. And again, uh, the kind of the the litmus, litmus test of your image being correct to color balanced in many in many cases is just moving it over the eyes because the eyes are the brightest spot on human face, and it has to be close to 255, close to the very highest, the brightest color. And in this particular case, is two two seven as you can see right the brightest colors on this on on this gentleman's face who is by the way edmund percival hillary the the, the first man to climb the mount, mount everest in case you don't know so um on the face of sir hillary the brightest color is 234 whereas it should be 255. so it's a great photograph probably made when he was on top of mount everest but it's not fit for etching and how to make it fit for etching again apply the histogram adjustment tool look at the histogram and uh, apply the tool that will improve the brightness of this image and 
I am going to do just that. And just to show you to you, okay, we've applied this, this transformation. And now if I move my, uh, my eyedropper tool closer to the eyes, what I see is the color is 247. It's much brighter than 251. It's much closer to the highest, brightest color. Uh, one more thing I wanted to recommend, and that's, as I said, something that frustrates me most is even the people who are in the business of preparing images for engraving machines do not do color balancing correctly. And I wanted to show you a catalog of, uh, I, I, I'm not gonna name the names, I don't even tell you what company it is and why does it matter? I mean, I just wanted to demonstrate the fact that even companies who sell catalogs for living do not color balance these images. And if you get it from them, you are kind of on your own. You need to understand what it is and why is it the image that you get from here come out? Why does it come so dark on the stone? Because it's not color balanced properly. I'm gonna to scroll to this catalog and just compare the drastic change in intensity of the image. Like this one, call, uh, the number 115 compared to 116. 116 seems to be color balanced correctly. 115 is so dark, likewise 120. And just scroll down and you understand that it's just, uh, Frustrating and uh, not good, not good practice. For example, um, okay, let's play with this a little bit. I'm gonna take this. Obviously, this is a thumbnail. This is just their preview. This is preview of their catalog, which uh, is like low quality image, but uh, we can play with it a little bit and try to see how we can improve it, how we can apply the same transformation that I just did. Uh, I'm just taking the screenshot, putting it into, uh, Paint, Control V, uh, and I'm going to crop it here as well. Um, something like this, okay, maybe something like this. Control C, edit, paste as a new image. Okay, again, this is the image, and it's 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 very deteriorated quality because they don't want always to give you high quality in this PDF preview. But I move my uh, I move my eyedropper. Actually, the, the white color is a kind of not too bad. But overall, the rest of the image is uh, mind you. You know, this color is like 116. They will not be even visible on the stone. So uh, what I'm going to do here, for example, in this particular case, um, adjust. Uh, brightness and contrast, histogram adjustment. Basically just wanted to show you some before and after again. Um, this is the current histogram of this image. It's very heavy on kind of dark grayish colors. There's almost no colors at the, at the top here. If I did this, maybe I did this. Uh, maybe I did this as well. Just compare before and after. Before and after, before and after. So um, yeah, I guess buyers beware. You get all of this, you get these libraries of um, the sellers that offer them, mind you that they might be just not color balanced correctly. And a lot of images, not just this one. I mean, I, wherever I go, a lot of people who, for example, sketch the images by hand and then they scan them, they don't understand that just scanning the image does not guarantee correct color balance. The image might be perfect, it might be very good, but you need to look at this and you need to adjust your colors. So to summarize, there's two objective tools that I would recommend for ensuring that your image is correctly color balanced. One of them is called color histogram. Another one is our spot checking tool called eyedropper and uh, make sure that your images are correctly color balanced before you feed them into the machine. Because if that's not, if your image is not correctly color balanced and your machine is, even if your machine is set up perfectly, you are not guaranteed to get the image that is as bright and as good looking as it could be uh, with the correctly color balanced uh, picture. I hope this demo that we just had on my computer screen was useful in understanding what is the color balance image and what kind of tools we use. As far as all these color histograms and all these image editors, I'm going to probably shoot a separate episode on the whole variety of our 
raster image editors and which ones are good and which ones are not so good, which, one, which ones I recommend and personally use, etc. etc. Uh, uh, before I part uh, with you in this episode, I wanted to explain and express one important thing. A lot of people getting engraving machines, be it our machines, diamond engravers or lasers, they just feel or believe that they can get any photograph, feed it into the machine and automatically result it will automatically result in a good engraving. As you could figure out from this episode and the previous one, that is not correct. You need to prepare your machine, you need to set it up in a certain way, you need to prepare your image. But as a general rule, as a paradigm that you need to always understand and follow, granite is not paper or your computer screen. Just because your image looks good on your computer screen, on your cell phone screen, doesn't mean it will look as good as that on granite. Because granite is black, paper or your computer screen is usually white. Granite cannot even show as many halftones as your computer screen can. So keep that in mind and kind of change your mental picture a little bit to understanding that it's not such a trivial thing to get a photograph and have it engraved on stone so that it looks good and it looks bright and your customer is happy. So uh, hopefully through this videos that uh, I'm, I'm making, you will find it useful and uh, helpful to move ahead in this field of uh, stone engraving. If you like these videos, please do me a big favor. Go on our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash impact etching, or just search for impact etching on Facebook, and subscribe by liking our page. This way, you will get automatic updates every time I post new episode of, episodes of this series. Likewise, you can find us on YouTube or you can find us on the web by going to www.impactetching.com. I'm Andre. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next episode.